Praise the Lord. Greetings and blessings of Shalom from the set of choices. You know, we continue to be heartened by your faithful viewership and your positive feedback week after week as you tune in to this very important broadcast. We want to encourage you as you continue to navigate life's ups and downs. We want to encourage you to ensure that you choose to be a part of the solution. Bring something to the table that will encourage, that will uplift. And so today, we join, we want you to join us as we continue the discussion as it relates to moving towards the direction of our focus. God bless you. Stay tuned. We love you dearly. Thank you very much, Dr. Benjamin. And it's always great to welcome our viewers and to thank them for their faithfulness. Um, early in the week at the United Nations General Assembly, there was quite a lot of talk about um, bringing hope about unity, about stopping all the wars and conflicts that are happening around the world. And um, similarly, you know, as I read some of the reports coming out, um, there's quite a lot of negativity and um, persons were somewhat cynical. Um, negativity has a way of prominating individuals and also society, and um, it can spread. And like we've been doing for the last week or so, we've been talking quite a lot about focusing on the positive issues in our lives and in our society. And uh, I want to share a portion of scripture that is found in Philippians chapter 4 that captures the whole idea about being positive, about reducing or excising from our minds and from society negativity. And it's found in Philippians chapter 4, um, verse 8. The Apostle Paul was writing here to the church at Philippi. He was addressing the Philippians, and he was talking, um, he was writing, a matter of fact, from prison. And one would have thought that somebody in prison may not have necessarily good advice. But here is what he said. He said, finally, meaning, you know, finally, this is um, something you should really pay attention to, my, uh, my brethren. Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable, whatsoever is just, whatsoever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there be any moral excellence and if there be any praise, dwell on these things. And we want to encourage you um, to dwell, to meditate, to contemplate good things, things that are praiseworthy, things that are commendable. And so we want to continue that discussion as we look inwards um, in our own lives and outwards towards society. We want to encourage us all that we should focus on things that are commendable and excise from our minds and from society things that are negative. Gentlemen. Thank you very much. And um, we really appreciate how you come up to us wherever you see us. And you say to us uh, your comments about the program. Paul was in prison. Thank you very much for making that um, point. You find that in in the first chapter, verse twelve to fourteen, he actually says he was writing from prison. He wasn't there on a um, a magno offense. He was facing the death sentence. And um, these words that we have are not from a man who is fly by night, a wicked criminal, somebody who did some foolishness. But he took time out to say, understanding the vagaries of life, you know, we are going to do a program on a, perhaps the most famous Guyanese in terms of his work in diplomacy and everything like that later on. But Paul here 
writes, after all of these battles, he says, whatever things are true, we could say it three, four times during this program, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report. And for those who give reports, up early this morning, I wanted to see what was happening in that the Florida panhandle, I think they call it, with Tallahassee and New Orleans and, and the whole Florida straight there because there's a hurricane that should land tonight. And it is it in a in a basin where it's picking up strength. I wanted to hear the report on that. You have family, friends, brethren living in these areas. And um, so I trusted the reports of the meteorologists and even those reporters who have done uh, weather gear and gone into the, the storm to give a dramatic report. The Apostle Paul was dealing with life, dealing with our circumstances, dealing with vex issues, dealing with, with all kinds of complaints and he, he, he he remained in the middle and he told us about the value because he understood that human beings have a tendency of whatever your focus is, human beings have a tendency of moving in that direction. And here was this man, even though his circumstances were less um, honorable, was I mean, not encouraging, he has given us words that we are still meditating. And that's what we want to encourage you as you go through life. If you live on the East Bank, or perhaps even on the East Coast, but the East Bank, I live there. And the problems you get on the East Bank now, well, it's a long time this has been happening. And in an attempt to repair, it seems to be we are waiting for that final day when matters will be resolved. In the meantime, it's a vexed thing to travel. People use their fingers in creative ways to communicate messages. Some not just thumbs up telling you things are good, but you get an impression with the other ways that people use their fingers to communicate. They're upset. They tell you about your aunt and your mother in not flattering ways because people are upset. This man is saying, when you're in, in a spot of bother, communicate what's true. Communicate what's noble. Communicate what's just, what's pure, what's lovely. And so we are encouraging us, whether in the print media, electronic media, or Wherever you are, communicate things that are uplifting. Training of the mind in such a situation, you know, bringing the mind around to adapting to such circumstances. It's not an easy task, but it's something that can be done. Like the Apostle Paul was admonishing us. And so... Think of it as you go along life, you're making inroads and you are preparing your family for the future. And up comes someone to put a stumbling block in your way. And you want to retaliate the best way you can according to the flesh. But you take time out to think about your offspring, your spouse, and your investment. So instead of allowing the carnal nature to have its way, you allow good sense to prevail. And in so doing, you not only save yourself and your family, 
you might also be saving the person who set out to harm you because of the good judgment that you're allowed to prevail. Is this always easy to do? No, it's not always easy to do. But like the apostles say, think upon things that are pure, that are lovely, that are of a good report, so that God can be glorified, so that society can be preserved by my actions, not conforming to the patterns and the, 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 the discipline or the indiscipline nature of society, but allowing the values that would have been instilled in my life to take root when those circumstances present themselves. I think of the professional who swore to his or her training and then goes into an environment where all of these things are threatened. Truth, honesty, justice, purity, good report, lovely. And I think about the temptation to, to submerge oneself into the culture instead of being one who will change the culture. And some will say that's too hard. I look to you as if by Jesus, I promise you I will sacrifice me life for anybody. But it takes only one to make a difference, you know. And uh, here we are today to encourage us at the personal level that we first set our minds on things that are pure, honest, just, lovely, pure, and good report. And let that now become, I don't want to say a contaminant. Let it become a, like a fertilizer. Let it become like, like a vitamin. Let it become like a real good supplement to change the environment in which we live and work. Well, that's where the battle is. Um, we are really pressing our viewers, ourselves and our viewers, to really begin to think transformationally because the culture may require a response that is less than the truth. And the culture accepts that. The culture celebrates what is not a good report? I mean, this morning of recording, uh, uh, one 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 member of the panel or a panel was abused on the road. That's not a good report by a school child, female, all because he was encouraging her to be up and about to get to school and not to linger on the road on the road. Now, these kids believe that what they see if people getting away with bad reports decided to add to that bad report. That's not transformational thinking. That is destructive thinking. And what we are what we are massaging is that we are encouraging in the face of all kinds of threats, all kinds of problems, all kinds of difficulties that we say the truth, deal with matters honestly. The whole Pauline transformational thinking and as, as Reverend Asana alluded to, our professionals, you and I are duty bound to communicate clearly on these lines and not to become a part of what might even be mainstream culture, but it, divide, it defies the scripture. If we're going to err, 
let's err on the side of the word of God. I'd like to jump to suppose a couple scriptures. You know, this topic that we're dealing with is, is so critical and relevant, moving towards our focus. I'd like to put another scripture on the table. Uh, Proverbs 23, 7, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So this thing has a lot to do uh, with the mind. i like to put another scripture on the table, Philippians uh, 3, 14, which says, I press towards the mark. Apparently, the mind needs a mark in order for us to really achieve whatever, whatever that mark is. All right, the Apostle Paul says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You know, and I'm thinking, Bishop, about that young man who, at nine years old, told his father, I want to study at Oxford. I will study. And his father says, listen, I don't have money to send me to Oxford. Fast forward uh, six, seven years later, when that child said, to his father again, Daddy, remember I told you I want to go to Oxford? He said, Buy you again? <laughs> and he said, I never asked you to pay for it, you know. I just told you I want to go to Oxford. This is the letter of acceptance. I'm heading to Oxford, Daddy. Wow. Moving towards our focus, it's so important that we create opportunities and create structures to leave an indelible mark in the lives of our children. Because apparently we move in the direction of our focus as he think in his heart. So as if you could inspire and leave that, just, just create the environment and let, let's see what happens. Because that's just it. <laughs> I find that, you know, sometimes the pressures in society, if we allow it to get to us, it forces us to act um, before we think, um, to be responsive or, or to respond quickly without thinking. Um, perhaps it might have something to do with the uh, that we have instant coffee, we have instant tea, we have so many things that are instant. And perhaps that has gotten into our thinking. Um, Paul could have been a very bitter man. I mean, Paul was facing the death sentence. He could have lashed out. And so, well, you know, my end is near. And, you know, the, the, you know I, I'm going down. I'm going down the gallows. I'll be executed. But he thought about us, that in spite of the difficulties and the challenges that we might be facing in society, we can make a difference. You know, you might be saying, well, you know, everybody, we tend to, to, to pull out and, and have comfort in the fact well, everybody doing what is wrong. But the appeal here is that I can make a difference, not because everybody else around me might be doing the wrong thing. So Paul, being in chains and all of that, said, never mind all the pressure that Rome is bringing upon me, notwithstanding the fact that so many soldiers are around me. I want to make a difference, and I am going to say, think on things that are commendable. So I want to make an appeal to all of us. Never mind the pressures. You can make a difference, like how Paul has made a difference in our lives, so we can be encouragers to you to think on things that are commendable. I love the point that Dr. Lee made about being consistent and persistent and not pursuing instant gratification. That's something that I truly endorse, and I, I've experienced it in my own life. And... One of the things that I want to put out there and for us to disabuse our minds from is that struggles and hard times and, and negative thoughts can can go upon anybody. And that's a, that's, that's a part of Christian living too. You can be a, a pastor at the highest level or you can be an ordinary person. You'll be faced with, 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 with negative thoughts. You'll be faced with, with, with some thoughts that that will tell you to defer from your dreams and aspirations and don't go this direction. But the beautiful thing that we are admonished to do, we're encouraged to do, is to take these thoughts captive and bring them into the obedience of Christ Jesus. Amen. Bring them into the obedience. So they will come. It's a part of life. I could remember 
while pursuing my studies, you know, one of these thoughts come to my mind, you know, by, by jump off of the highest building and just end it all. You know, if I were to do that, I would not be the lawyer that I am today, you know, and I, I wasn't suicidal. I, I, I wasn't, that, that, that wasn't like a, a particular thought pattern that, that always, you know, was there with me, but the negative thoughts come, they come sometimes. It's a part of life. And I just quickly roped that back in. I remember that Jesus Christ came to give me life and life more abundantly. I remember that he had a purpose for me. He has a purpose for me. And so I, I, I stuck on that. I didn't want, and, and, the beautiful thing, too, is that I saw some of my colleagues that started studying in high school with me. They had already become a lawyer, and I, I looked at it, and instead of feeling intimidated by it or, or deterred, I felt encouraged. I was like, okay, if she could do this, and her name is Sidonia Hamilton, if she could do this, I could do this as well. I was encouraged by it. I didn't want to shortcut anything you know beside track or anything i just locked in and i knew that god was with me and i just trusted him and today i am what you'd call a success story all for the honor and glory of jesus christ we say amen to that now let's look <clears throat> there are so many of you who watch not all of you are christians but you have uh a mark that you've set yourself. You have some ideals, and I'm not talking here about salvation. You have some ideals that you, and some principles that you have adopted and you use to guide your life. It's something like this the Apostle Paul is referencing. And in your context, don't allow yourself to be led away by what might be mainstream thinking, especially when you're in a hard, a hard situation. Keep your focus on those values that might have been communicated to you by your grandparents or your parents or an uncle, or if you come from a village, they're very powerful. They used to be very powerful people in the village, like the headmaster, like like the they used to call them then the um you call them the dispenser. We call them pharmacists now. Like listen to this, like the postmaster. Mm -hmm like the uh, sergeant of the police station. The overseer. The, the overseer. Mm -hmm. These men and women were the guardians of, of these villages. If I come to this here, we have about four countrymen who, who, uh, who are on this program. The idea is you don't discard those principles. You don't, you have to remember that we, we need to encourage people and speak positive things to them, especially when they're going through hardships. Because when you think on those things, you'll be inspired to do well and to do better and not to fail and not to give up. And not to bring disunity through your utterances and actions or to bring dishonor to other people. You know, Bishop, I love the admonition coming from presenter after presenter after presenter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is rhetorical because even as we speak to you, we are examining our own lives and encourage. And when we read Philippians 4, 8, you know, I believe Paul is suggesting that we can control our thoughts and our thought life should be characterized by what is good 
and what is uplifting. And this is the admonition to all of us today. Let us think of those things that are pure, that are honest, that are noble. And then the scripture was uh, referenced earlier. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And also, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So we're taking it one step further as we continue to focus on moving in the direction of our focus. This is our admonition to you today. And we pray that God will continue to help all of us as we seek to fulfill our purpose. The watchman on the wall is critical to the process because we're dealing with the environment and we need watchmen who are quite aware of what is happening in society and who will stick to what is required to ensure that the environment come into that place where it is conducive for growth and development. So that is critical to this whole process. And this man who wrote from, from prison said, the things which you learned, the things which you received, and heard, and saw in me. Pick someone. You heard an attorney, this identified, even called the name of a colleague, who obviously, he picked that person. And if she did it, so this is a good marker. You 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 don't pick someone who you 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 know like if you're running a hundred meters, you don't pick someone who's running last. You 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 pick someone who might be of greater strength, being there, done that, crest the tape before you. And the apostle Paul was all of this, and he wished that the God of peace will be with you. That is our wish also, that the God of peace will be with all of you, wherever you are, whoever you are. This is choices. God willing, we'll see you next week. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Silesia on behalf of the set, reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.